This is Andrew Yang, a tech entrepreneur who is running for president for some reason. You may have heard Mr. Yang talk about how automation and technology is going to displace millions of workers. My friends in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants. Uh, okay, okay, enough with the fear mongering. So in this episode, we're going to explore the question, are robot trucks going to steal millions of jobs from truck drivers? So as Andrew Yang said, he has a lot of friends in Silicon Valley. I am Asian, so I know a lot of doctors. <laughs> Sorry, wrong clip. My friends in Silicon Valley are working on trucks that can drive themselves. Uh, they say that they are 98% of the way there, and these trucks will start hitting the highways in five to 10 years. When his friends say that the trucks drive themselves, well, that's a bit of an oversell. For the foreseeable future, these robot trucks are only viable in two types of roles. The first is long haul trucking, where freight is delivered over a distance of hundreds or even thousands of miles. Take for example, this truck by Embark. First, the trailer is connected to the robot truck. Then a human being preps the truck and sends it on its way. The truck software can easily navigate long stretches of highway for hundreds of miles until it reaches its destination. And FYI, a driver is in the truck's cab at all times. As you can see, the truck software shines on highways where lanes are well marked and traffic is a lot more predictable. Where self-driving trucks do not work, however, are on city streets where you can have thousands of pedestrians, bikes going the wrong way, streets with lanes that may or may not be marked, and other unpredictable conditions. The second role for automated trucks are tailored solutions that are specifically designed for each individual customer. For example, Volvo has installed six automated trucks to carry limestone from a quarry to a crusher four and a half kilometers away. Its route is a private road, which means excluding weather, the conditions of each trip will be exactly the same. Volvo also has autonomous vehicles working down at the docks in Gothenburg, Sweden. Volvo's Vera truck transports goods from a logistics center to a port terminal and operates on a predefined route, and in this case, partly on public roads. It's all controlled through a cloud-based service and management center. So while this might be replacing trucking jobs, it's creating new ones, i.e. people, to monitor and control the Vera fleet. These vehicles are designed for short distance work in very specific circumstances, so you will never see one of these out on the highway, ever. Being a trucker is the most common job in 29 states. There are three and a half million truck drivers in this country. 94% male, average age 49, average education high school or one year of college, a lot of them ex-military. Now, while there are three and a half million truckers in total, the ones that would be affected in the next five to 10 years would be heavy and tractor trailer truck drivers that do long haul work. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in 2018, there were just under 2 million of them. So every time that he says that there are 3.5 million truck drivers that would be affected, it's misleading. Because there are 1.5 million short haul and local drivers that would likely not be affected. Like say, UPS drivers. The robot truck might be able to get to your house, but it won't be able to make an actual delivery. Are we pretty confident that we're gonna have robot trucks on the highways in five to 10 years? Sure, they'll be on the road. I mean, they're on the road now. Like they're actually testing robot trucks now. Are you gonna have a robot truck maybe with a human there like twiddling their thumbs as like a quote unquote fail safe? Like maybe. To describe it that way is an oversimplification. And it really shows how Yang doesn't understand trucking at all. The job itself is much more complicated than just driving from point A to B. For example, even if a truck can completely drive itself, robots don't exist that will be able to do things like connect a trailer to the rig, putting gas in the tank, and keeping refrigerated trailers fueled up and operational. What happens if a truck gets into an accident caused by another driver? What will the robot do if it strikes a pedestrian, whether or not the truck is at fault? And then they're stopping at way stations. How will the truck know which lane to go through? How will it know where to stop? or which scale to step on? What if the load is overweight or oversized and has to be taken off the road? What if the robot truck is driving and there is a tornado warning? 
Will it know exactly where to park to keep the vehicle safe? <laughs> but yeah, human drivers don't have anything to do but twiddle their thumbs while the robots do all the work. I spend a lot of time in Iowa, which is a really huge trucking hub. And you go to them and say, hey guys, you worried about robot trucks taking your jobs? They're like, there's no way a robot could take my job. This is not something that they worry about. Their attitude has transitioned from that somewhat. Probably because you keep insisting to them that they're going to lose their jobs and face economic uncertainty. What's their next economic alternative going to be when the robot trucks come? It's a rhetorical question, nobody knows. Although Yang has mused about what might happen as a result of truckers losing those jobs. Dozens of truckers recently protested in Indianapolis. They did something called a slow roll, which they had a bunch of trucks, and then they just started driving their trucks slowly on the highway. Gums up traffic. They were protesting the electronic monitoring of their driving time. If you look at the footage of the slow roll in Indianapolis, it was a very peaceful protest and not exactly gumming up traffic. How do you think they're going to react when it's a robot truck that's actually taking the job away? I'm going to suggest they're not going to take that well. But instead of offering a solution or just coming to a logical conclusion, Yang is preparing for the worst. We need to implement a plan for how we handle the loss of these jobs, and we have to do it soon. Some estimates have the mass production of these vehicles as occurring within the decade. This has potential for serious unrest if not handled properly. Anyone who thinks the truck drivers are just going to shrug and be like, all right, I guess I had a good run, I'm just going to go home and figure it out. That's not going to be their response. It's going to be much more likely that they say, you need to make these robot trucks illegal, or they're just going to park their trucks across the highway, get their guns out, because a lot of these guys are ex-military, and just be like, hey, like I'm not moving my truck until uh, you know I get my job back. And th there'll be a lot of truckers in the same situation. And check out this tweet where Yang tries to connect the Odessa shooter losing his job as a truck driver to people losing their jobs because of a robot truck takeover, implying that there could be thousands of similar incidents. Yang's dystopian narrative is very troubling to say the least. And while he's the only presidential candidate talking about how the robot trucks could affect the economy, he doesn't seem to have a solution. All Andrew Yang is saying here is that he's planning to have a plan. That's not a plan. So the, the trucks are really bad at something called snow. They rely upon the road markings, and the snow covers the road markings, and then the computer's not sure what to do. The computer is also not capable of chaining up tires in snowy conditions, but <laughs> that's a whole other issue. The truck is going to signal a teleoperator sitting in a warehouse in Nevada. So the teleoperator beams into the truck and then can see out the front of the truck like it's a video game because the trucks have cameras in the front. But what if the snow covers the cameras? And what if there are tens of thousands of trucks on the road that are affected by the snow? That means you'll need tens of thousands of remote operators monitoring those trucks. And wouldn't those operators be twiddling their thumbs in between snowstorms? So they beam in, they take control of the truck, and then the computer says, I'm, okay, I'm confident again, you can leave, and then they beam back out. And if it's so easy to beam in and out of these trucks, that means that they could be vulnerable to hackers who either want to steal a truck or just take it for a joyride. And the same goes for the rig itself. Someone could forcibly stop a truck and steal expensive parts. So companies might not be on board with the idea of shipping hundreds of thousands of dollars in freight unaccompanied as they could be targets of theft. Otherwise, every day could look like a scene out of the Fast and the Furious. What is likely to happen, strictly for reasons of safety, is that the Department of Transportation will add rules that will require a human operator to be in local control of semi-autonomous trucks under their care. This would include truck platooning, which is when one truck remotely controls a second truck directly behind it. Also, state and local governments could pass legislation that outright ban unmanned robot trucks from populated and heavily trafficked roads, either for safety issues or to protect jobs in local economies. Or both, it's not out of the question. But then again, I could be wrong about all this. I mean, I'm no trucking expert like Andrew Yang. I am Asian, so I know a lot of truckers. So what about you? Do you know a lot of doctors? I mean, do you think that the robot trucks are going to take over the trucking industry? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thanks for watching, sharing, and hitting that like button. And as a reminder, the official Don't Walk Run Productions Discord server is up and running. And if you're a Patreon or YouTube channel member, you get a special Discord role and access to some private channels. And you might see Poofy on there, who was a big help on this week's script. 
Thanks again for stopping by, and, and if you haven't subscribed already, well, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you.